In this video, we're working on Goldie. A Peterbilt that is painted partially gold and it has three engine problems. And what are they? Well, this might be one of the problems. And this might be one of the problems. And this is definitely one of the problems. Probably the biggest one, but what else are we gonna find on this? Well, we just have to wait and find out. I got Josh with Epic Channel and we're in my office again. It's 30 degrees outside. It's May 1st. Makes a lot of sense. And you know, folks, after a lot of deliberization, I don't think that's a word, deliberating, I need to go back to Western States, folks. I don't know how else to say it. We need some parts. And we did visit Western States, and we sure as heck bought some parts. What parts? Well, you'll just have to wait till later in the video to find out. But you can see here, rainy, dreary morning, close to freezing. Said possible snow, but I didn't see any. So... The town we're in here is Old Town slash Newport. They're the same town, and they're on the river here, Ponderay. Look up how that's spelled, though. You will laugh. Not spelled like Ponderay. Anyway, they're on the Washington-Idaho border, and that is where the truck we are going to work on is. And this is that truck. As you can see, painted gold. At least the fenders are. There's a beautiful van. Might be my van, so I'm a little biased, but... This is what we got. Cylinder head has been removed. I was called out, told to remove the cylinder head, which I obviously already did, because it was putting compression into the cooling system. They were looking for cracks in the head, blown head gasket, and basically why it was doing that. So as you can see, the spacer plate's not been removed. I haven't cleaned anything yet. Head's off. And I looked at the head gasket and didn't look too good. Nothing was completely blown out but if you look especially here at number four between four and five you've got carbon passing uh, burned fire ring not completely blown out like i said but there was a lot of carbon or rust on almost all the head bolts an unusual amount and not the easiest to get out of there it's like they were installed dry it looks like and some of these obviously they had carbon passing onto them Kind of unusual. I believe this engine had been in frame possibly once before, from what I could tell. Whoever assembled it knew what they were doing. I didn't see anything weird as far as the assembly goes, but yeah, these head bolts were a pain to get out. Whenever you got them rusted, dry, and with carbon on them, not the best situation. So these are what I went to Western States to get. These are liner protrusion bolts. They're just track bolts, actually, but they have two washers on them. There's a fiberglass washer and then there's generally a brass one although i'm not using those so i've got spacer plate off here got spacer plate shim off and you can see this one's pretty nasty we're gonna have to clean this off now this is what they call a dirty liner protrusion so we have to do liner protrusion but with the old liners installed so that means we have to clean this area with the liners installed which is quite difficult actually because the liners really get in the way before we can do the liner protrusion so what we've got here is, since I'm not in Western States anymore, they had a spare spacer plate that we would do use for liner protrusion, but this spacer plate's more than likely going to get reused. At least I didn't see anything blatantly wrong with it. So unfortunately, that means you have to clean it off, which saves parts costs, but costs labor time. So you want to be careful with these two. You don't just want to take a big die grinder to it. So I was popping all the water furrows out then. Then I'm going to scrape it wipe it down, and basically get it as clean as possible. And over the years, I've gotten more and more used to hand cleaning, just about anything that I am cleaning. Generally, I'm very, it's very rare for me to get out a die grinder and a abrasive pad and clean just about anything anymore. So clean the spacer plate. Now we have the deck to clean. You can see this is just by me cleaning it by hand. Is it as good as factory? No, it never will be, but it's quite clean clean enough to reinstall definitely clean enough to do our liner protrusion here so now the arduous task of cleaning the deck without the liners being removed it is so much easier with the liners removed they really get in the way not only that to do the liner protrusion you have to clean the top of the liners off which kind of stinks because if you end up needing to pull the liners out this is basically not a waste of labor but you're going to spend a lot more time cleaning with them in place Whereas if you're doing a full end frame from the beginning, you can remove all the liners and it makes this whole process a lot easier. And you see me here, I'm actually cleaning parts that aren't even on the deck, like 
these large dirt and debris buildups around the deck. Because the last thing I want to do is get dirt anywhere on the deck or in the pistons when reassembly. So try to get it as clean as possible. So what do we got going on here, Josh? I thought you didn't like power tools. Well, I'm not a huge fan of these wire wheels for a die grinder application, which is generally what they're used for. But RT told me if you use them with a drill, the little spines do not go flying all over the place because it's not at such a very high RPM. And a drill is a low speed enough that it's gonna clean but not damage really anything. So it's a really good way to clean up any surface. It's not gonna take off any material. And in general, getting between the liners is a pain in the butt, but this really helps get any debris between the liners there. Now, I had already scraped any old residue off. This is basically just to get all the little pieces and chunks off. I'm not a huge fan of basically using any sort of power tool to get rid of gasket material in general. It tends to just turn it into a powder and throw that abrasive dust all over the place. We're just really cleaning debris out here. So I was just finishing up and I was like, what the heck? Oh, I left a big piece of carbon or something on the number six liner. Got our own little destruction of the week here, so let's go take a look. Look at the number six. That liner is actually cracked. Yeah, it's actually protruding out. That sucker is cracked. That liner is no good. So, yeah. Interesting find. I've never seen one crack like that before. If you don't see what I'm talking about, I don't see how you could miss it, but that sucker, look at it, you can see it moving. But yeah, that's broken. Um, I'm gonna call a customer, see if he wants me to finish doing liner protrusion or uh, see what it's about to do. This week's Destruction of the Week comes from Derek, and this is a little Cat 7.2 liter here, and yeah, anytime your coolant looks like that, you know you got problems. What kind of problems? Whole problems. And Derek, what? What is this hammer doing here? Oh, maybe that explains the hole being enlarged there. Maybe he was trying to get some debris out to get pictures sent to me, so he used Mr. Hammer there. That is a distinct possibility and look at that you can even see that the piston is completely gone and there's a hole in the uh well what would be the liner but the cylinder wall there derek loves flamingos for some reason also but can't blame him for that very cool pictures let's get back to work here so you can see we have cleaned the deck pretty well here and what we're going to do now is re-tap or i should say chase the head bolt holes and the first one i'm doing here is well, doing it with a ratchet, and normally I would use an air drill, but shop I'm working at here does not have air, and so doing it by hand, and I said, you know what, after the first one, I am not doing this by hand, so I got the old Milwaukee electric ratchet here, way better idea, using some of this Zep weak sauce penetrating oil here, and it's not the best, but we're going to be experimenting with a, uh, I'm going to find to be a much better penetrating oil here in a second. So why do you do this? Well, the threads on these head bolt holes are pretty nasty if you remember what the head bolts look like. And since you're gonna be doing liner protrusion, probably cutting counter bores, probably putting the head back on, it's a good idea to have clean head bolt holes. So this is something I always do, is particularly on the C15. Now, getting my Zep ran out, so I, this company, Wellworth, sent me this Thunderbolt penetrating oil. I've never seen it or heard of it before, but I really like this stuff, folks. Look at this. Super foam action. Let's go in for the close-up. Slow-mo shot here. So uh, This can's pretty big also, and it's really foamy. I It might be hard to tell in the video, but the tap I was using here, actually, it might be subjective, folks, but it seemed to work a lot easier with the head bolt holes I was using the Wellworth thunderbolt penetrating oil here and to be clear folks i did not buy this product it was sent to me but you know me i'm an honest guy i really do like this stuff it 
worked really well. Um, I would pick this definitely over the Zep stuff I was using before. Seemed to really do the trick. Uh, if you want to get some of your own, I'll put a link there. And I think they even sent me a promo code. You can get a discount on it. They make so all sorts of chemicals, but big fan of their penetrating oil there. So as you can see, the bolt holes are tapped. I ended up sucking out the head bolt holes with a little uh, SOS vacuum. And there's a little bit of dirt and stuff. I'm, what I'm going to do is brake clean off the top here and then wipe it down. And then we are ready for our very exciting liner protrusion or projection test. Now, this is the first real in-depth engine work I've done, folks, other than overheads and stuff. And the customer is a big fan of PAI, which I have heard of, but I've never put on any of their products before. Apparently, in the aftermarket, they are a huge producer. And what I was doing here is kind of going through and looking at their products. Uh, this is the head gasket kit. And looking for the spacer plate shim because you need that to do liner protrusion. So, got it here, and we're gonna put our clean liner spacer on here. And then we're gonna be using our new hold down bolts. Now, like I said, normally these are brass and then the fiberglass ones. Uh, the brass ones are $10 each. I only had a couple of those, so what I ended up using was steel ones with the fiberglass ones underneath. Should protect the liner, should be able to do the plan just as well. Now, I only bought half of the kit, so you could do half the cylinders, and then you'll have to move the kit over. I'm going to do an experiment also to see if you can get away with only using half the bolts to do all six. I'll tell you what the unfortunate results of that were here in a little bit. But, yeah, what we're doing here, we're just putting all these head bolts. These are the track bolts that hold the spacer plate down to do your liner protrusion. So, doing number one here. Remember, the head gasket on number one didn't look bad, and that's kind of what we're going by here. And as you can see it's measuring at about 3 thousandths protrusion, which is very good. Generally, on an cut block, you want it to measure between 1 and 6 thousandths with only 2 thousandths variance per liner. But generally, you want more than 1 thousandths. It's preferable. So, what we're doing here is, oh, that one's getting low. That's about a 1 thousandths. And that is not good. Remember, the firing on number four between the liners was kind of the most troublesome looking spot here. This one's measuring about one to two. And you can't really measure between the liners, unfortunately. But that one's getting pretty low. There were several ones that I ended up measuring. And that's kind of a problem. So you can see here I moved the bolts. My experiment where I only used half the bolts did not work because I was trying to use the inner ones. And it doesn't really hold down the spacer plate enough. So it was giving me false reading. So had to move all the bolts. Uh-oh, folks. This is number five, actually. But if you see there, it is in the minuses. Yeah, minus one. That is no good. So we're going to pull all the liners out, which I did end up doing. Didn't film it, though. That was on a separate day. That was one long day uh, on that day. And... Yeah, driving back home here, We're going through Old Town, headed south now. You can see all the rain clouds have cleared. Nice blue skies here. They say Montana's big sky country. Look at that sky, folks. Beautiful here, heading south here. This is between Old Town and the very small town of Blanchard, Idaho. Up here in beautiful North Idaho, folks. Hope you enjoyed this one. This is the most detailed I have done on a engine since leaving Caterpillar. Very interesting. I've going to be doing another video on this one uh, pretty soon, and I hope you'll enjoy it. It's a little bit different style, but uh, I think you'll find it interesting, and as always, thanks for watching.